John Feigenbaum here, president of David Lawrence Rare Coins, DLRC Auctions, and Dominion Grading. Uh, it's November 18th, and I thought I'd uh, come up with a quick market update, coin shows, calendar discussion, and gold topics, uh, as everybody seems to be interested in how gold pricing is currently affecting the rare coin market. Starting with the show report, we just returned from the Baltimore Coin Convention, which was an uh, excellent coin show up in Maryland, and business was decent, I would say, not great, but business is a little bit overshadowed by gold bullion spot pricing, and a lot of dealers have been so active buying bullion products and, go and, and meltable gold-related items that they need to buy and sell and really get, come to a coin show like Baltimore to sell the material that they've invested in in the last two or three weeks. So a lot of the business was overshadowed by that, uh, and we didn't, we didn't uh, see a tremendous amount of activity until Friday, which turned out to be a great buying day. It was one of the best buying shows we've seen in an entire year. And John Brush and I were really active at the show, and we bought, I would say, four or five double row boxes, about 300 coins of really good collecting material. The best fresh inventory we've seen come through the system in quite a long time. And you'll see a lot of that coming through the auctions in the next few weeks, so keep an eye out for that. There's two more coin shows on the schedule this year. One is in Houston on December 2nd through 4th. We'll treat that as a buying show as well. It's a, a regional show that a lot of national dealers are going to, so it should be decent. Uh, should bring in some good fresh material. And finally, we'll attend the coin show in Las Vegas, the PCGS Invitational, which we also anticipate we'll have a good attendance by the dealers. It'll be the last coin show of the year for everybody, and we expect we expect it to be okay. But you know, a lot of people's minds are elsewhere in that last few weeks of December. But we're going to try and head out the year with a bang, and we would love to buy and sell coins with you between now and then. So give us a call and let us know what you're interested in, or if you have coins to sell, because the fun show, of course, starts out the year in January, and. We always expect a big event for that. The fun show is really one of the biggest coin shows of the entire year. Uh, the market in general report is that we've, we've witnessed a, a, a solid leveling of coin values in the last couple months. I think the first six, eight months of the year were marked by somewhat declining values where we'd seen peaks of coin values in the, uh, let's say in 2007 and 2008. In 2009, we saw some of the levels coming down a bit to where they are now, and levels have actually stabilized to increasing. What we've seen is, you know, people now realizing that coins have become a little too cheap in a lot of areas, northern dollars, silver commemoratives, gold is probably not too cheap at this point, but other areas of good collector coins, even, even things like 1877 Indian pennies, have come down in price, and there's a lot of great values out there, and collectors who've been reluctant to jump in are now coming back and we're seeing increased demand in the collector segment. We're really not seeing many collectors selling, which always tells us that if people aren't selling and there's an increase in buying activity, at some point you'll have to see upward price pressure. The gold market. As everyone's, everyone knows, gold is going through the roof. It's an old story and there's no reason to rehash it here any better than uh, MSNBC can do. But gold, as of uh, this video, is at 11.36. And I note that in the last 30 days, gold is up about $83, and in the last year, it's up $393. Everyone asks me whether I think gold is going up or down at this point, and you know, my personal sentiments, for what it's worth, are that gold probably will go up before it goes down. Uh, I think we'll see 14 or 1500 even before we see 800 again. Now, I think if it gets to 14 or 1500. It's pretty scary. I think it's I think it's going to drop at some point, and the higher it goes, the more precipitous that drop can be. So I think one has to be concerned about overall levels. But it doesn't keep it from going up. But we're seeing you know large governments putting putting a lot of money into gold positions. I think Mauritius was on the news today for as a country that just invested in two tons of gold, and if. You know, a little country like Mauritius jumps in after India, of course, made headlines a few weeks ago. Everybody wants to see where China goes with it and, and other countries. Any, any of these major companies can, countries could do a huge impact into gold prices. And it's just really a level of confidence among all the major countries. If, if Russia would follow, uh, then there'll be so much confidence behind the metal that, that prices will go through the roof. And I believe uh, 
that adjusted for inflation that an all-time high for gold would be about $1,777. We're, of course, at an all-time high at the base level, but in 1980, uh, we hit a much higher number when it's adjusted for inflation. So I would keep an eye on gold, and when gold goes up, rare coins that are gold tend to go with it because a lot of the marketers that sell gold find customers who are willing to put money into gold-related products like you know, Better Day Gold Coins, St. Gaudens, things like that. We're seeing increased activity by collectors in those areas. We're not seeing increased activity by collectors in Lincoln cents or Indian penny cents to gold. There's just simply not a correlation between the two. The, the American consumer and collector is still feeling the pinch of the economy. Uh, there's still trepidation to jumping in and spending a lot of money on your collection if you feel that it is a a hobby, um, maybe a little bit frivolous compared to your other greater needs, but the coin collecting industry and hobby is, is alive and well, and the dealer community is very strong. Uh, you know, we've seen some high profile bankruptcies, National Gold Exchange and, and others. That's simply the same as anything else we've seen in any industry where there are companies that are have weak balance sheets and, and, and really probably uh, had problems off the balance sheets that nobody knows about and are therefore going to go out of business. But, but in general, there's a lot of strength among quality coin dealers and we expect this, the hobby will bounce back. And I think anything you can buy now at current levels um, is a good value. And we, our inventory is probably in the best position it's been in two or three years. We've been very aggressive about selling down old cost of inventory at We've, we've taken a lot of losses and things like that, but our biggest focus uh, here at the office is to buy in fresh collections and be in them at current levels so that we can sell them at the fair market prices. Nobody does any good uh, paying last year's prices for U.S. coins. Uh, so that said, we hope to hear from you, and I'd love your feedback on this video. And if there's anything that myself, John Brush, uh, Jason Smith, Matt Kavalik, any of us can do for you here in the coin department, we're happy to do it. Of course, our shipping department is, is ready to take care of all your needs and get these orders right out to you. Uh, if you have collections you want to sell or auction, we'd love to hear from you in the same vein. We'll make sure that you, it gets here okay. Uh, we'll travel to you if it's a big collection, whatever it needs. We can do a lot more as a little company than the big companies can do because we're nimble. So thanks again, and we look forward to hearing from you.